Wait, did you start the timer? No. Oh, well, let's go. You don't want to like, introduce the pun? Oh. Well, today's 12 Minute Talk. <laughs> Keeping up with, was that Monday's 12 Minute Talk? No, Monday was what? Uh, was previous, whatever. In one of the latest podcast, Monday was Sig Spirality. That's right. Uh, I said I was going to do 223 versus 22 Nozzler because the next. Probably, I don't even know if it'll be next week or the week after or whatever. We're going to do $22 versus 224 Valkyrie. But today we have the 223 versus 22 Nosler. Now, I'm, I'm going to keep this going like a certain direction, meaning whatever the closest factory, well, I'm going to do exact factory, the closest factory ammo offerings in this particular circumstance. I was able to like directly match them being it's a 55 grain nozzle 223 load, which is the box front and a 55 grain nozzle 22 nozzle load. And I just so happen to have an 18 inch Dame defense 223 with the same cans. It just kind of, it all happened that way. And then I have an 18 inch 22 nozzle with the same can. Now the only difference is the 22 nozzle is eight twist. The, uh, Two two three is a one seven. I couldn't, you know. Sorry, it's not. It's not going to make that much of a difference. Yes, the faster twist will slow it down incrementally, but it's not going to be enough to like skew our data whatsoever. Because obviously, the twenty two nozzle is a larger cartridge. It has more case capacity. Same, st- you know, two two three bolt face. The point four whatever. I don't remember what it is now. Or no, it's point three something. I don't remember. Anyways. So, what I did is the same thing I did last time. I chronographed them uh, several times and then averaged the, all the velocities. And then, you know, I pulled up some data sheets, confirmed the data was correct out to, the, on this one I just did uh, 300 yards. Because I didn't really mess with going long range on these because it is a 55 grain. It is a boat tail, uh, boat tail ballistic tip. So, its performance is going to be slightly better than like, you know, a non boat tail or whatever. But these, I just run my dad out to 500 yards. Cause like, this is going to be more of a, this particular ammo is going to be more of like a varmint hunting and re- realistically like 300 yards only that really matters. But I went ahead and ran data out to 500 and then confirmed it. So again, starting with the chronograph velocities, uh, the 22 nozzler, 55 grain boat tail, uh, ballistic tip, you're looking at a velocity of 3,465 feet per second, which is pretty good. I mean, yeah, it is an 18-inch barrel, but it's pretty good. You know, the 223, what is it? I just realized you went straight into the... You were like introducing... You didn't start the fucking timer, did you? No, I told you, you have to introduce first. <laughs> I did. And then no, no, you introduced and you, you just kept going. You paying attention. <laughs> and then I got distracted. Start the timer, put... 10 minutes on the clock. <laughs> Jeez. I was like, well, no, you were talking about like why you were doing this. And then I was honestly, I was just sitting there listening to you and I was like, going yeah. on and looking at your fucking doodads and whatnot. It's called a, it's called retro gaming modifications, dad. Nerd. It's a real lifestyle. So God, All right. we, we just pretend no, like you, we had you, you went clock. straight from, <laughs> you went straight from your other like thing yeah. right into it. So anyway, he's 10 minutes. You're going. <laughs> I just I don't think we're, we're ever gonna utterly get utterly failing at the twelve minute talks here lately. I mean I think they've been pretty fair, but as far as our know, timer in, in, in terms of the format, it's just <laughs> chaos. But anyways, back to where I was. The uh like I said, uh the twenty two dollars of velocity, thirty four sixty five, three thousand four hundred sixty five feet per second. Again, that was an average of I think I did it four or five times, I don't remember. The two twenty three came in just under three thousand feet per second. Still, I mean, it's right there. Twenty nine ninety one was like the average of again four or five different groups, four or five different five shot groups. Average velocity, as far as accuracy goes, mm, let's just say an average of one M away. Like nothing, nothing blew me away. Both of these rifles are broken. 
Uh, I do know that this twenty-two dollars is capable of shooting small groups, like the Allied Munitions ammo shoots fantastic out of this particular rifle. The Daniel Defense is a different story. That's probably the best groups I've ever shot with it. <laughs> so uh, that's a that's a whole different subject for another day because I've not been impressed with my Daniel Defense. Just saying. So I, I think uh, you know, like I said, eighteen-inch barrels. The twenty-two dollars is a one and eight twist. The two twenty-three is a seven twist. What are these suppressors called, Fitzy? The Mark whatever. 13 SDs. Advanced Armament Corporation. Cool. Meh. They're cool, but I, just, I wouldn't recommend them anymore, but that's just me. Uh, like I said, it just so happened that I had them on both these rivals, you know. So, but I want to I wanna start with, you know, because you could, you could zero these things at 200 yards and just call it fine. Obviously, the one that's going faster is going to have more energy. It's pretty pretty simple, but let's start. Go ahead and start looking at our three hundred yard mark. Now, what that velocity difference buys you is probably well, it ain't no probably. It's half the drop. So, if we have a hundred yard zero on both these rifles, which I did, I zeroed at hundred, and then I confirmed this data at three and five hundred yards. At three three hundred yards. With 100 yard zero, the 22 nozzle had about eight inches of drop, whereas the 223 had double that coming in at a little over 16 inches of drop. That's significant as it pertains to like farmer hunting. Like, especially if you want to run a 100 yard zero, which I'd probably just run a 200 yard zero and you can kind of cut that hold over at 300 down, you know. But if we're going to do a 100 yard zero, like that's double the amount of drop. Like, that's literally, that's pretty huge. If we look look over here at windage, I say we as if y'all can look at my charts. <laughs> windage, uh, you know, again, I programmed this with a 10 mile an hour crosswind. You're at a, almost 10 inches of, um, what the fuck, I just went blank. 10 inches of uh, impact shift on a 10 mile an hour wind on a 22 nozzle, you're at 14 and a half on the 223 that's even more significant i mean i'm not discouraging anyone from running this whatsoever you know but like if you obviously the 22 dollars is a clear, clear winner i mean it's it's pretty simple it has more cartridge case capacity so it's going to win across the board but here let's jump over here to 500 yards the the drop begins gets pretty significant uh the 22 nozzle is at 42 inches the 223 jumps all the way up to 80 inches again almost double double the amount of drop and then same thing the wind hold gap isn't as significant as the the drop which i found interesting but let's look at uh energy at 500 yards on the 22 nozzle, you're at 381 foot pounds. And then again, this is math. This is an actual, like, there's no way else to know. But again, 22 nozzle, 500 yards, 381 foot pounds of energy, whereas the 223 only has 192. That's pretty significant. So, well, I mean, if you just look at, look at 100 yards on the 22 nozzle, you're at 1100. In 41 foot pounds versus 683 on 223. So there's really, there's, it's, there's really no contest here in my eyes. Like 22 nozzle is the clear winner. Now, where this will get interesting is we, when we compare the 22 nozzle to the 224 Valkyrie. Now, I'm pretty sure one of my Valkyries is the 18 inch. So that'll be interesting. And again, it'll probably be another week or two before you hear that comparison. Like, I just I wanted to get this out of the way because there's so many people out there like, oh, no, there is no comparison. And guess what? Like, if we set this up to a 75 grain and a 75 grain on the 22 nozzle and 223, there's still going to be no comparison. Like, it's the 22 nozzle is still going to be outrunning the 223. Again, it's more case capacity. Now, the, the cool thing about the 22 nozzle that still uses the 223 bolt face because of its uh, cartridge design. But where 
the Valkyrie is going to beat the 22 Nosler is off of projectile size because, like, you're going to be capped out due to cartridge length on the 22 Nosler, probably around 75 grain. Now, there, there are certain projectiles that you can, like heavier projectiles, you can get to fit in a 22 Nosler cartridge case. But a lot of these 22 Nozzlers, because it was a varmint cartridge, like Nozzlers done really good at coming out with varmint, souped up varmint cartridges, is a lot of the twist rates are going to be in that eight twist or even slower. So it'll be interesting to see like what we find there on our next comparison. Because I, I really wish I had, you know, an eight twist Valkyrie that's 18 inch to compare with the 22 Nozzler eight twist. And I think I do. I'll, I may have to build a whole nother rifle to get that test done. But one thing I can't do, can't do that I want to do is like a 16 inch seven twist Valkyrie and a 16 inch seven twist 22 nozzler. It, and again, this is based off factory ammo and I'm going to have to do some digging to try and get stuff to line up pretty good on the 22 nozzler and the Valkyrie as far as like, you know, projectile weights. But I'll be able to figure something out. Like, I'm sure there's some, I know Nozzler does some 77 grain RDF. I can probably get my hands on. Uh, I could, I don't know about the 224 Valkyrie as far as like finding something that's pretty, pretty adequate in that BC comparison. But again, maybe I'll just have to load it, but load like within like factory stuff. Don't like ramp one up over the other or anything like that. But I've been wanting to do like factory ammo to kind of keep that bias out of it because I can easily see someone going, well, you just loaded that Valkyrie a little bit hotter. You loaded the 22 nozzles a little bit hotter. Well, this is factory ammo. They're going to be running off Sammy Specs. 20, 20, what? Two minutes? What'd you hold up the zero for? <laughs> 2.00. But anyways, so, I mean... As it pertains to like only shooting coyotes within a couple hundred yards in, a, in an AR-15 platform, other than fucking nozzlers shooting themselves in the foot for the price increases and the lack of ammo being available, like the 22 nozzler was, still is like a fantastic AR-15 variant option for varmint hunting, especially if you want to run those 50, 55 grain projectiles. Like, uh, that's no slouch, uh, you know. 34 what did i say 34 some change yeah almost 3500 feet per second uh yeah i don't really want to carry 18 inch barrel but like if you're gonna do like a night gun with a thermal for coyotes or whatever that's a valid option but like i said nozzle kind of shot themselves in the foot with their i can't imagine their price increases are that warranted because they're like higher than anybody right now on all their components and everything and then like i said they uh and I, I get it. Like, there were stipulations on what they could produce and everything else. But they really kind of... Uh, I seen it firsthand. A lot of people dumped 22 dollars because they couldn't find ammo for it. Uh, it's still... like Especially if you load. Load your own. Ooh, I we might have talked about it before. I don't remember. I have a bolt action 22 dollars That's where shit... Again, bolt action is where shit gets fun in varmint calibers because you can upload stuff so much. Even a two twenty three in a bolt gun, like you can get them pretty spicy. But a twenty two nozzler and a slow twist bolt gun, uh, that is freaking fun as shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems as if we're out of time, folks. Uh, any more? Again. 22 Nozzler and 224 Valkyrie would probably be the next caliber face-off we'll do. Uh, if there's any more you would like to see, let us know in the comments down below. Be sure and check out AlliedMunitions.com. And if you're middling, go by Ally Outdoors. And we'll see you guys next time.